Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Conversation with Muse. In this episode, we are going to be talking about the six most important metric for a successful online store. Um, so let's jump right on in. Before we get started with the episode, to be sure to follow Conversation with Muse on all streaming platform, whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or SoundCloud, subscribe to the YouTube channel to be updated for all of the new episodes, including our other segment of after hours where we sit and we speak about pre-show post-show or just like general topics it's really unscripted so also follow us for any new after hours updates i do also want to highlight that um, our new website is live yay so go ahead and visit us on our website which is www.musemarketing so that's m-y-u-z-e marketing um, dot com for all your free downloads, updates on pay, on podcasts and paid and free courses. We have new blog content constantly and all the videos that we shoot for conversation with me. So go ahead and visit our website. And also that's the easiest way to get in contact with us. So it have all our information there. So go ahead and check out that new website. So the reason I wanted to give these six metrics is mostly to help online business store owners for the simple fact that a lot of business owners, they understand the basic metrics, right? Um, or maybe some business owner does not have a large enough marketing team where someone is strictly a data analyst. And again, a data analyst is someone who uh, sits and decipher all of the metrics that's coming into the website. So these are the six metrics that you'll need to keep a very close eye on, on your online store or service business with selling products online. It's easy to think that you can just kind of go on your day to day and not understanding certain metrics of the online store. Everyone wants to understand revenue. That's why we're in business, right? Is to for revenue and profits. So everyone understands mostly basically what that means, but there are other parts of the business that can help you better your revenue and your profits if you are monitoring this closely. So let's jump right in. The first one we're going to be speaking about is your conversion rate. What is your conversion rate? We did a blog post. Well, not a blog post on our Muse marketing group. Uh, social media, we have a post about um, the six, everything that I'm mentioning here, but I wanted to do a podcast on it so I can kind of elaborate a little bit more. What the conversion rate is for your store is essentially the percentage of people who've actually purchased compared to the people that have visited your store. So for example, if you have a thousand people trekking in and out of your store on a daily basis, but only 10 people have purchased, 10 people have converted. So you've took them from that introductory stage of the purchase cycle to now that final stage of the purchase cycle, which is completing a purchase. So your conversion rate is measured that way. Why is your conversion rate important? Because if you're doing any paid advertising as a business or a brand, you want people to at some point convert. Let's not think about selling a product. Let's think about a service business. If you are a coach or you are some kind of a consultant and you are spending money on any platform to get people to come back to whether it's a website, a landing page for like a lead generation form where they have to fill out the form. If you're driving significant amount of traffic, whether on Instagram, you're doing a reel and people keeps keep just like going to your website, going to your page, but they're not converting. It's a low conversion rate. What does that tell you as a business owner or a consultant or whatever industry you're in insert industry here <laughs> that really lets you know that you're doing something right at the top of the funnel. But then with that conversion rate, if your conversion rate is too low, it lets you know that, okay, maybe I need to look at something else in my organization. And we'll get into some of that a little bit later on, but it tells you that you need to look into something inside the organization to then say, Hmm, what am I doing wrong? If people are driving, coming, are coming to my store on traffic and I'm getting significant amount of traffic daily, but they're not converting is my checkout process too long. Is my form, does my form have too many questions? Is it not as easy as I thought it would be? Is it bulletproof or dummy proof, right? So you have to then think of the conversion rate allows you to then think of what else is happening in the business. 
the result of that is your online conversion rate will help you to understand your first step. If you are now, let's go back to e-commerce. It will let you understand the first step in optimizing your website. Now on another podcast, we are going to be speaking about the six ways to optimize your website because it's the simplest thing can literally change your conversion rate once you optimize your website properly. So that will, we'll get into that into another episode, but I did want to, for this episode to say, number one is to pay attention to your conversion rate, right? Number two would be your average order value. And what is your average order value? It's an average of approximately how much a customer is spending anytime they shop on your website. So for example, if you are selling a multiple products, say we have a t-shirt company and I'll try to stick with this example as much as I can in this, in this episode, but say if we have a t-shirt company, right? And we are selling multiple t-shirts, different designs. We have, um, regular t-shirts. We also have some long sleeve t-shirts and the long sleeves go for 40 and the regular t-shirts go for 20. If your average order value is about, let's just say $40. That means at least probably six out of 10, someone else, someone is adding either two products to their cart or they're buying a long sleeve and a short sleeve. So they're mixing multiple product. If your average order value was $20, that lets you know that most people are only buying one product and it's your sole product of just a regular t-shirt. So understanding your average order value, it really depending on the amount of services you have on your website, as well as the amount of products that you have on your website. The more products, it gives a opportunity to have a higher average order value, which we also call AOV. So it gives you an opportunity to have a higher AOV. Now the results of having a higher AOV is more money, right? <laughs> Consequently, we want to say, okay, how can we get more money, more people to spend more money on our website? It's giving them the option to buy more things. Now I do want to pause for a second. I don't want um, someone listening to this to think that, oh, I just need to add more products to my online store. No, if it does not make sense, don't do it. Don't go adding a million other t-shirts to the website. If what we already have is not selling, maybe you just need to think about the design or maybe you just need to think about the audiences. But if you have a good conversion rate, like we spoke about earlier, if you have a good conversion rate and people aren't necessarily, um, increasing their order value when they come to the store, then now you'd want to add another product. So we already have regular t-shirts. We have long sleeve t-shirts. Let's maybe try to add a hat. That's then called the upsell. You know, McDonald's doesn't upsell so well. It's you go and you want the McChicken and they're asking you, oh, would you like to add fries to that? Oh, would you like to have a drink to that? That's the upsell. Instead of you only spending, I don't know what a burger at McDonald's go for, or even a McChicken. <laughs> only know what a fries cost because that's all I have for McDonald's. Um, and that's only because, well, it doesn't matter. But say for example, the McChicken is $3 and the fries is $1.99. And then the drink is another $1.99. Instead of them telling you that, you know, you can add all three of these, two of these things separately, then they give you an upsell option where if you add it, oh, just for a dollar more, just for a dollar more. So the AOV for McDonald's significantly increases. And just think about every time that is done when someone comes to the drive through, you even get a meal and they ask you, would you like to, I don't know, buy a McFlurry? Your AOV is increasing consequently. So that's the same thing here. Let's think about our t-shirt shop. What is our average order value per customer and how can you increase that? If your average order value is $20, we want to increase that AOV to 35. This way, when more customers start coming to the store, we know that, okay, if every customer that comes to the store is on average going to spend $35, then I need to drive this amount of customers to the store this month to convert at a 9.5 conversion rate. Right. So you see how that works. It's your conversion rate. What is that metric and understanding why is that important to the brand? 
then it trickles into your average order value. What is the average amount a customer is going to spend when they come on the store? The next thing I want to speak about was your abandoned cart percentage. This is huge and a lot of business owners miss this when they are thinking about what to do on their store. Your abandoned cart metrics significantly just means how many people is getting from the start of the customer journey, which is visiting the website, viewing a product, adding a product to the cart, and then leaving. And people abandon their carts for different reasons, right? You and I, we're probably on our phone scrolling. We see something, we like it, we add to the cart, and then the phone rings and we start a conversation for two hours. And it's just like, oh, you completely forgot that you were quote unquote shopping or simple. You have kids or you're cleaning up or you're washing the dishes or you just say, I don't have my credit card right now. My Apple pay is not working or my Amazon pay is not working. Let me just get to this another time. So you abandon your cart as a consumer, right? Now let's think about it as a business owner. When you see a high abandoned cart rate, you have to automatically try to think, okay, maybe they did love the product or else they wouldn't have added it to their cart. So now you have to think as a business owner, what can we do to get people to come back to the store? This is where retargeting comes into play. This is where those SMS messages comes into play. This is where emails comes into play. And there's so many tracking devices that allows us as advertisers and marketers and business owners to be able to get the customer back to where we want them. So let's give a perfect example in our t-shirt store. Someone added a t-shirt to the cart and they forgot. And it's just like, oh, we'll get back to it or oh snap, I need to go get the kids. Let me do this later, right? Now, what we're able to do is set up processes to get that customer back to the store. So if it's someone that has already ordered on our website, chances are we have their contact information through some kind of, of some kind of database system where we're able to send them a text message to say, hey, we saw that you left something in your cart, head back over and check out or we can send them an abandoned cart email. So an email flow that says 20 minutes after they abandoned their cart to say, Hey, we saw that you left this, our, we saw that you left our new black tea in your cart. Go ahead and check out today. And here's free shipping, you know, giving them an incentive to come back to the store. Or if you are a service business, what does that look like? Perfect. Someone started filling out your form and they didn't complete it, but your try your pixel or whatever it is picks up to say, okay, someone was in the process of filling out a form. You can then retarget them and say, Hey, I see we saw that you were interested in our services. Go ahead and complete the form X, Y, Z. So there's different option. And the reason why your abandoned cart rate is so important, it allows you to think of, is my checkout process too long? Because maybe just maybe, and this is, everybody thinks their website is perfect, right? But we all know that we can always improve. There is something we can always improve. So if your conversion rate And this is why this, your conversion rate was the first thing I mentioned, because if your conversion rate is low and we're looking at other parts of the website or other metrics, such as your abandoned cart rate, then you're able to say, oh, I have a large abandoned cart rate, but I also have a low conversion rate for my, for my website. So that lets you know that there's something in the checkout process that is turning the customer off. And oftentimes, (laughs) I hate to say this, but oftentimes it's one of two things. It's either your checkout is too complex where it's not easy for a customer to check out, Um, not just filling out the information, but it's they don't know where to put certain things or they don't know where to add their promo codes or it's just a complex checkout process, right? Or on the flip side, it can be your shipping. Shipping takes away a lot of sales. And if you are in a business, a service business or a um, a product business, think about what that shipping cost looks like. Try free shipping. If you have a high abandoned cart rate, try free shipping as a promo to say, okay, let's see if people convert better when we're doing free shipping. 
if your business model allows that. So a lot of people be like, oh, let's just give free shipping without there being an issue on their website. If you're able to get money from the shipping, go ahead and do so. But if it's significantly turning people away from the business, then consider doing something about the shipping, maybe a lower shipping cost or given shipping options versus USPS or FedEx or DHL, whatever those shipping options are. So think about that in your business, but that would be number three. Number three would be your, your abandoned cart rate. What does your abandoned cart rate look like? All right. I hope you guys are learning something from this because in me talking, I'm like, girl, yes. Okay. What else? How can this metric align with that metric? It is something that I speak about constantly, but I did want you guys to think about what some of these metrics mean to your business. And again, it can be for your service business that you have an online store or an e-commerce where you're selling products or physical products or even digital products, really. Number four, and this is where it gets fun. This is where the excitement begin. If this is the part I love and the reason why I love what I do. Customer acquisition costs, AKA CAC. What does it cost you to acquire a customer? And basically it's the money spend to get someone to buy your product. And what are you spending across all platforms? So what are you spending um, digitally to get someone to come to your store and purchase a product um, or in paid digitally or non-digitally, right? So are you taking out newspaper ads? Are you taking out magazine ads? Are you taking about taking out billboards? Um, are you, what is it that you're doing to get customers to come to the store? Now to calc to properly calculate the acquisition cost for your customer, um, the formula essentially is, and if you're watching, if you're listening to this, the formula is on the screen right now, but I'll go ahead and just say the formula for customer acquisition cost is the total of your marketing spend over a set period of time divided by the number of new customers within that period. So for example, if you have spent $20,000 this month on advertising, and the amount of new customer you have brought to the store is 950 new customers, then your customer acquisition cost or your CAC is $21 and five cents. Again, because it's your overall spend for the business in advertising and uh, acquiring a customer divided by the amount of new customers. Why is it new customers? Because you've already paid to acquire your existing customers. So you're not paying to get them to come to the store. Now, if you're doing retargeting, that's a different conversation, but essentially you are acquiring someone to come to the store based on all of your, all of your paid advertising. So you would want to have as low as possible in for some businesses, it definitely differs um, and the results varies, but for our t-shirt business, if we are paying to acquire a customer $55, whoa, <laughs> that's too much money. Why? Because our shirts, our primary t-shirts cost $20. Our long sleeves cost $40. So if we're paying over $50 to acquire a customer, we're losing money even acquiring a customer. Does it sometimes happen where you lose money? Absolutely. It's going, I'm going to talk about another metric. And so we'll come back to this CAC in a second. Um, we're going to come back to this CAC when we do that. But I do want to say, if we're thinking about the logistics of the business and our average order value was $35 and I'm paying in my, for my CAC, I'm paying 50 something dollars to acquire a customer. <laughs> that customer is going to need to have a, to have a high customer return rate. They're going to need to be coming back because if I've spent $50 to gain a customer, the AOV is $30 or $35. Let's just say $30. Our AOV is $30. I just lost $20 just to acquire that customer. And if I'm doing that in a consistent cycle as a business owner, I'm losing money in the business. The marketing is not making sense for me. And this is where you see a lot of business owners, or this is where a lot of business owners pull back because now they're like, I'm spending too much on advertising. Again, this is why it's important to understand some of these metrics for your company. 
What are you paying to acquire a customer? Now, the results of properly um, calculating your CAC, your customer acquisition costs, are you're able to then figure out ways to acquire customers for cheaper and also how to keep new customers that you are acquiring. And again, we'll get into some of that in a bit, but think about it as a business owner or a service person or someone that sells products to the mass consumer. What is your customer acquisition cost? Think about that one. Now, number five, like I said, this is the meat and the bones. This is why I love what I do, because this is taking it from elementary and now bringing it into like high school, collegiate, maybe more collegiate. But number five is your customer lifetime value, which is also known as LTV, lifetime value. Your customer lifetime value is the basically the overall amount that a customer will spend in the quote unquote lifetime of being with your brand. And if, again, this is on the screen, but let me just break that down for you. Your customer lifetime val value is calculated with, there's a few calculations that can be done. And this is generally for businesses that have a long history or track record with their consumer. So this isn't necessarily for a business that's been around for a year because you don't have enough data to support um, some of these formulations that we're going to be talking about. Once you've acquired a customer, if we acquired that customer for cheaper than $50 and now we're selling new products, we're selling hats and, you know, we can send them an email and then they'll come back. We don't have to spend money to get them to see the hat. We can just send them an email saying, Hey, check out this new product that we launched and they'll probably purchase. And we didn't spend money to get them to come back to purchase. So that's one of the most important things about retaining a customer and your customer lifetime value value plays a significant role in that and to sustain a valuable business model it's imperative to optimize for your customer lifetime value and optimize your existing customers now if you're listening or watching <laughs> and you're saying monique what does that even mean what is this this is what that means a customer lifetime value is a financial prediction is predictive analysis into what is to come based on information that you have in the past. So if your business has been running for three years, you have enough data to do some predictive analysis. And this again is the fun part. <laughs> this is the fun part of marketing. So for example, in to calculate your CLV, a business owners must is, estimate the value of the average sale, the average number of transactions, the duration of the business relationship with a given customer. So if you're looking on the screen, you'll see that it's LTV is equal to the average amount of sales, which is why some of the metrics that we spoke about earlier was important. What is your average AOV? The number of transaction, the average number of transaction that a customer generally have when they come to your store and the retention period. Now, um, the lifetime value is generally one of the hardest thing and the most difficult um, and the most complex for businesses to calculate. So there are metrics, there are softwares for this. And the easiest I can think of right now is on Shopify. There is a customer insight, a retention customer insight app that does all of this for you. Put them in cohorts saying, OK, this person has spent this much in this time frame and this is what they've done and this is how they're going to move in the future. So also email services does this. So platforms like Clavio helps you calculate that LTV. So you don't have to use all these formulas, but it's good to understand what this means, right? Established businesses, again, with historic data can more accurately calculate their, um, their LTV rather than businesses who have not been around for that long. Again, only because you don't have enough data to support it. You're not going to have the time frame to support it. So you wouldn't know um, based on calculating how many years someone is going to stay with the business if you've only been around for one year. So this is going to be for people who have a stronger business history and can use that information to have some predictive analysis going into the future. So 
the result of what your um, LTV can bring would be to help you reduce your churn rate. So the amount of people that are coming to your store, if you're able to understand your customer lifetime value and build programs into keeping and sustaining an existing customers, your churn rate of a customer leaving then lessens, right? So yes, you're still always going to try to always going to try to attract new customers because that's how a business grows. A business grows not by multiplying your products because I mentioned that earlier, it doesn't mean you have to add more products to your site. A business grow by adding new customers, but in adding new customers, you also have to maintain or sustain your existing customers. So it's pillars and pillars and pillars. You started with 10. Now you're at a hundred. Now you're at a thousand. Now you're at 10,000. It's acquiring new customers while sustaining those existing customers. So lessen in your churn rate, understanding your CLV will help you to lessen your churn rate. It also helps you to strategize on building customer loyalty programs for your customers to stay. So we all have this and let me just give you the closest example to me. It's Sephora. Sephora does a really great job at having a customer loyalty program. So you want to keep going back and back and back, no matter how expensive we say Sephora is, or we can get our products from Ulta or another store because of our loyalty, their loyalty program. I want to go back to Sephora on my birthday every year. I get a free product because I am a member of that loyalty program. So, um, or with my points that I've built up, I'm able to pay for different things. American Express does the same thing, or a lot of credit cards does the same thing where you spend, you get five X points for this. If you go to the grocery store, you get two X points for this. So that membership keeps that churn rate lower and it helps to build their customer lifetime value. So it, once you understand your LTV, It then gives your business the opportunity to strategize on what can we do to increase our loyalty, right? Because again, it's cheaper to keep an existing customer. Now, like I said, the ways to increase that LTV is again, loyalty programs, uh, retargeting ads and or emails, or simply effective communication speak to your customer. It's a database that you have built. Don't just take their money and run. Don't just take their money and be like, oh, thank you for purchasing or thank you for signing up and they never hear from you again. Give that constant effective communication. Give them information of what's happening in the business. Tell them what's new in the business because now everyone wants to feel a part of a family. So if they feel like they're a part of your family, which is your brand's family, they will want to stay. They will want to keep buying more shirts. And you tell them about the material of this shirt or the new design that we launched. Tell them why these designs are important. Tell them why you conceptualize these designs or tell them why the shirts are made. For example, maybe you outsource your shirts to be made in Haiti. Tell them why it's made in Haiti and not in China. You know, give that backstory as to why your company does what it does. And that's just one form of effective communication. So whatever that looks like in your organization, then effective communication. Now I do want to pause for a second and go ahead and give you guys some stats on LTV on lifetime value. And this is so important. I really wanted to share it. So the first stat is A 5% increase in retention produces 25% increase in profit. Let me say that again, because when I read this, this blew my mind. 5% increase in retention, so retaining a customer, produces 25% in increase in profit. And what does that mean? It goes back to our upsell of the hat in our t-shirt business. If we retained a customer by sending them an email to just say, hey, we just launched this new hat, da 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 and they purchased, that small retention that we got just increased our business in 25% in profit. So multiply that times after time after time, and this will help you to increase the business. So that's the first stat. The second one was 
Acquiring a new customer is five times and 25 times more expensive than retaining an existing customer. So I did mention earlier that it is cheaper to keep a it's cheaper to keep an existing customer. Um, but statistics are showing that it's between 5x and 25x more expensive to acquire a new customer rather than keeping an existing 5x to 25x. That is huge. So that is something I want you guys to ponder on, right? The third is the probability of converting an existing customer is between, catch this, 60 to 70%. The probability of converting an existing customer, 60 to 70%. And that's the person that just bought our hat. Chances are they already got our products. They got our shirts. They love it. They love the design. They love the feel. They love the look. They love what the brand stands for. So when we send them something else, they're purchasing. So 60 to 70% is huge. This is why maintaining and cultivating your existing customers is so important. The last one, because I have two more, but I think the last one, um, this is going to be the last one that I share with you guys is 76% of companies see that the customer lifetime value as important, as an important concept to the business. 76% of companies sees the customer lifetime value as an important concept to the business. Are you a part of that 76%? Is your business a part of that 76%? Is your friend's business, ask your friend. If you know someone that has owns a business and you're not a business owner yourself, I want to challenge you and like leave me a comment somewhere or message me on IG or something and ask your friend, are is your business a part of the 76% of companies who sees their customer lifetime value is important and challenge them because this can literally save a business, right? So let's just kind of go back through some of these. The first one is your conversion rate, right? Your second one was your average order value. Your third was your abandoned cart, right? Your fourth, which was the juicy stuff, your customer acquisition cost. And then the fifth was your LTV, your customer lifetime value. And then the final piece of the puzzle that I want to highlight, and a lot of people are going to be like, that's it, really? Yes, because I think this is super important, was is the top keywords that are driving traffic to your store. So you're able to see this in the analysis side of your business, whether you on uh, whether you're hosting on Magento or um, Shopify or you're hosting on a Wix site. There's generally somewhere in your um, analytics section that tells you what keywords people are searching for. That's either driving traffic to your site, and then this is also research that you can do for your industry, do go to like SEM rush, or there's so many, so many, so many different places that you can do this. So if you're not tapped into what this looks like, I urge you to kind of jot this down, but you need to understand what keywords are driving top tra top traffic to your store. Also, not just driving traffic. When someone comes on your website, majority of website has a search bar. So also what are people searching for when they get to your website and or store? So in our t-shirt store, if people are constantly coming on and searching for dad hats, dad hats, dad hats, or people are constantly searching for, um, ribbed, ribbed tees or crop tops, crop tops then when I'm developing more products in my t-shirt store, I'm going to kind of do my market research and say, a lot of people are looking for dad hats on the store. A lot of people are looking for rib tees or they're looking for crop tops. So maybe one of those three things would probably be my next product, right? Because it's some market demand. If the traffic that's being driven to my store is best quality outdoors t-shirt, then this is going to allow me to, when I'm doing my advertising, based on who's doing my advertising, you know, Google keywords, Bing keywords, Yahoo keywords. So it kind of sets you up for other parts of the business. And this is something that you and I will speak about in maybe another episode on SEO. But this is also something to kind of scratch the surface. Think about some of those top keywords that are driving traffic to your store.
right? Now, <laughs> this was so informative. I hope you guys learned a lot or even took a note or two from some of the things that we mentioned. And if you have any questions or concerns, don't be afraid to like leave a comment in the, in the comment section on this YouTube video. But I don't want you guys to forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, if you are listening to us on any of those streaming platforms, go ahead and follow us so you're updated with the latest on everything that we have coming or every time a new episode is released. This way you're the first to know. Also, I do want to highlight again our after hours episode. Those are so fun. We sit and we kind of just blab about the guests that we have on our shows or, um, you know, pre-interview, post-interview, what do we take away? Because we learned so much from those interviews. So it's myself and LaVrench Rex. Um, and then I think we're going to start having other guests. So the guest has said, I want to be a part of that after conversation because the time frame is so constrained that we do our recordings. So you'll probably see a guest or two pop into those after hours um, conversation. And don't forget the website is now live. You are able to visit our website at www.muse marketing.com. And that's M Y U Z E marketing for all of our updates. We have free and paid courses there in that are going to be uploaded as well as vlogs and blogs that are updated weekly and all of our contact information is there as well. And again, if you got to this far in the video, do not forget to subscribe and share with your friend until next time. Thank you guys for watching.